20 minute message tonight. We would really be out early. Good to be here. You know, I'm just always reminded like what Ray was talking about. Um, I don't know if you heard, but our pastor had to spend a night in Atlanta. They missed their connecting flight. And uh, of course, the weather here wasn't too good Friday, so they never left till even five o'clock. No, that's okay. I'm not going anywhere, so. Um, they were supposed to leave at one o'clock. So they ended up having to spend the night in Atlanta. It was a long night. He said by the time they got into their hotel, it was 10 o'clock at night. And then they had to leave the next day to get to, to Las Cruces. Actually, I guess they fly into El Paso, Texas, El Paso. And that wasn't until 1 o'clock, which would have been 3 o'clock here. So that was kind of a long day and a half. So, But I just think about the, the way the Lord takes care of us and uh, provides for us. And sometimes we don't even think when we're praying, you know, Lord, keep it. And you don't. You don't know what, what could happen uh, on the plane, you know. Lots of things could happen, but the reason they didn't fly was because of the, the weather, the wind. And he said when they came into um, uh, El Paso, oh, he said there was about 11 minutes where, man, the turbulence was really bad, shaking the plane. He said, man, it, we were tipping. And so you just, you, you know, you just don't know. So it's always good to, to remember to keep each other in prayer. And uh, praise the Lord uh, for when God answers those prayers. And our pastor's doing well. They had 48 down there. Praise the Lord. And he's going to see Stephen uh, Charity. I don't know if it's this, probably this week, right? Going to go see them and maybe be there for next Sunday. So keep that in prayer. They'll be traveling, I think, by, uh, by car. So keep them in prayer. And they pray again them for their return home here. I think they're coming back. Next week, I believe so, but he's not sure about when he'll get here, if he can preach, if he has to quarantine. So there's a lot of things that they're always up in the air. Keep our older folks in prayer. Uh, a lot of them are getting shots. And so there's just a lot of things to, to remember people in prayer for today. And uh, I was just counting the people that, that weren't here. I, I, I think I counted over 30. So we got a lot of people who still aren't here. People are still out. We've lost a lot of folks, too, folks. And I, I started counting up all the people who've moved, moved away. I think that was over 30. So a lot of things going on, and, and Satan's always fighting us. And so tonight I'm going to preach a message. I call it Reminders. Reminders. And uh, we'll be starting in Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. And uh, reminders of the great I am. Reminders. You know, sometimes uh, uh, I thought we were over talking with Jim and Dot last night. They're, they're such gracious hosts and everything. We learned a little bit more about their testimony, their salvation, how God worked in them. It's just, a, it's just amazing. But reminders, and Jim was telling me about he was in Deuteronomy. And when I think of Deuteronomy, I always think about uh, remember and don't forget. Don't forget to remember. And it's just over and over in Deuteronomy. And uh, reminders, reminders. How many times have you sat in the, the preaching and the preacher will say something and you think, oh, man, yeah, I haven't, I haven't thought about that in a while. And he just happens to be preaching something and it, it hits you. Usually God is trying to tell you, yeah, don't forget this. Remember and think about this. Because we forget so many things along the way. And I think God wants us to remember these things. So tonight there's just some reminders. And I hope it will be a blessing to you. We're in Exodus chapter 3. We'll pick it up in verse number 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. 
And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Now drop down to verse number 11. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath, hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word, and we pray for the blessings upon the reading and the preaching of your word. We pray that you uh, anoint me, the Lord, just to preach forth your, your word and power, and we pray for the Holy Spirit of God to touch people's ears, and open their ears, and we pray that you touch hearts, that they would receive your word and apply it to their lives. Lord, we'll thank you for what you're going to do. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. The great I am here is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's an interesting term. It means the self-existing one. The self-existing one. Now, a lot of people want to argue about who Jesus is. We know who Jesus is. And so tonight we'll be in mostly in the book of John. Because you know uh, the I am's of John. And so we'll take a look at some of those. I don't know if we'll get a chance to look at all of them or not. But turn over to John chapter 6. And these are, as I call them, reminders. But, you know, the Lord works differently in so many ways in our lives. And he is all things. And sometimes we forget that. And so these are just uh, reminders to us as we look upon it. Some of the things of the great I am's of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pick it up in uh, verse number 35 of John 6. John 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Uh, let's go back to uh, verse 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God. Well, wow, that's a good question, isn't it? You ever, uh, we were noticing, uh, I think this morning, Daniel pointed out some questions. And it's always great when you look in the word of God. God puts questions in his word for us. I mean, I, I love Thomas. I mean, when you go to John chapter 14, Lord, we don't, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Isn't that a great question? And then what is Jesus' answer? Oh, that great answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The questions that are in the Bible are for our benefits. When you go through them, every time you see a question, look at some of those. Job has great questions in there. But here we have, have a question. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Wow, that's a good question. What do we have to do? Well, let's see what he says. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. Well, here we have it. You're going to have a definite answer right here. That ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Wow. There's a responsibility for us. We know Jesus is, is the, uh, the creator. He's the savior of the world. But there's a responsibility, isn't there? That we believe on him. Faith. Faith is an action word, folks. It's not, a, it's not a, an active. It's an action word. You have to apply your faith. You have to do something. It's not just an ascent up in your mind. You have to apply it where? Right here. According to Romans chapter 10. So he says, They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What Doest, what, what dost thou work 
Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Turn over to Matthew chapter 4, and what's Jesus referring to? He's the living word, but the written word is so important to us. Go over to Matthew chapter 4. And we know of the temptation of Christ here by Satan, but let's just pick it up down in verse number 4 of Matthew 4. Matthew 4 and verse 4. But he answered and said, how do we, how do we answer the, the devil? What, what should we do? Scripture. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Turn over to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And what we're going to find is the word of God. You can't live without the word of God. Job says it's more than my necessary food. Job said that. Wow. Let's pick it up in verse number 3 of chapter 8 of Deuteronomy. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Uh, if you held your spot in, in Matthew, turn over to uh, chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Without the word of God, folks, where would we be? Where would we be? In chapter 6 of Matthew, I want you to think about this. Pick it up down in verse number 9. We, we commonly call this the Lord's Prayer. But chapter 6 of Matthew, verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And man does not live by Bread alone, but by what? Every word. How many of you thought when you read that, that, you know, I better get into the word of God today. Give us this day our daily bread. What did, what did Brother Swanky talk about? Going home and closing up your book? Set it Where? In the bookshelf, on the mantle, picking it up the next week. Why were the Berean Christians more noble than, than the Thessalonians? Because they received the word with all readiness of heart, and they searched the scriptures every week. No, it doesn't say that. At, every month? They searched the scriptures daily. Wow. Wow. That's how important uh, the word of God is. Now, back to John. Go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And as I said, we're going to be mostly in John, but we'll look at some other things too. But let's go to John chapter 1. And we'll read the first 14 verses. There's so much in here, and it'll tie into some of the other things that we want to talk about. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 
there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light that, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The fact that Jesus Christ is the, the living word. Turn over to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Jesus Christ is the, the living word. But guess what he is using against Satan? He's using the written word. This is so important to us. You, uh, you stand by your faith. But how's your faith doing? We'll take a look at that. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, look down at verse number uh, 23. The Bible says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Why do we, why do we sit here born again tonight? Because of the word of God. Without the word of God, folks, you're not going to be saved. By the word of God. Um, pastor preached not too long ago over in Amos about a famine in the land, remember? And what was that famine of? Of hearing the word of God. And I tell you, you know, a lot of things that Brother Swanky was talking about, that's what we have in America. We have a famine of hearing the word of God. Um, turn over to uh, Revelation, Revelation, and then we'll go on from here because a lot of this is, is foundational to, to everything that we're talking about. Pick it up in chapter 19 of Revelation. Verse number 11. And I saw heaven opened, and a, behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful, and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Uh, we know that's the Lord Jesus Christ who's coming again, the Word of God. Uh, turn over to uh, chapter 22. And, and God gives us some warnings. Um, remember Brother Schwenker was talking about, is this your God? Is this your God? And so many people think, the wrong thoughts about God. But over here in chapter 22 of Revelation, pick it up in verse number 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. You know the plagues that are written. What's the last plague that Moses had given to the Pharaoh of Egypt? Yeah, it was the death angel, huh? Verse number 19, and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy sitting from the things which are written in this book. You take things away from this word and God's going to take your name out of the book of life, he says. That's very serious, very serious doings. Now turn over to John chapter 8 and some of these things are leading right into our next I am, but John chapter 8 and verse number, verse number 12. John chapter 8 and verse number 12. The word of God, he starts right off with the bread of life. He starts with how important the word of God is to us. It's our daily bread. 
maybe some of you remember the daily bread. We have a Baptist bread now, just to try to help us. It's not uh, meant to be in place of the Word of God. It's just uh, something at, and added to the Word of God every day. We need to be reading the Word of God. Verse 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Again, we, we think about the light. We talked about that where? over in John chapter 1 that we were looking at. That he is the light. Light is every man that cometh into the world. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Remember Daniel? Go back to Genesis chapter 1. Remember Daniel was talking about that? Talking about the creation? Appreciate the message this morning, Daniel. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. That's the word of God, folks. And God said, you know how many times that's mentioned in chapter 1? It's repeated over and over again. God said. What God says is important. God says what he means, and he means what he says. Um, let's look at um, Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. We're using a thumb in our way through the, the Bible today. But Colossians chapter 1, let's pick it up in verse number 12. The Bible says, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet. He's qualified us. He's made us ready. How did he do that? To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. How did he do that? In whom we have redemption through his blood. I think that was mentioned this morning, that redemption. Through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. You won't find that in the, the new Bibles, will you, Mark? They take it right out. The blood is taken out. There's so many things in the corrupted versions of the Bible that you have to be aware of. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created. Uh, the Jehovah Witness will say, well, there you have it. He's, he's the firstborn created. What's he talking about? Well, if, we, if you keep on reading, we'll find out. For by him were all things created, really. If he's the first one created, how did he create everything then? That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Daniel touched on that again this morning, didn't you, Dan? For his pleasure. Wow, are they created. And, be, and he is before all things, before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about the resurrection. Who's the firstborn from the dead? The Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one who could do that. Now, as we take a look at all these things, he is the light of the world. Um, I, let me just finish that because I like that next part. That in all things he might have the preeminence. The Lord Jesus Christ should have the preeminence. That's what we want to do. We want to lift up the Lord and Jesus Christ. Turn over to uh, Revelation again. And... We'll see this uh, one more time, I think, and then we'll, we'll go on to some things. But a lot of things will be intertwined in here. But in Revelation chapter 21, look down at verse number 23, talking about the new Jerusalem. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Wow. Wow. Take a look at that sun. You can't look at the sun, can you? Can't look at it. 
And guess what? The Lamb's going to lighten the heavens for us. Oh, my, just think about that. The power. We, we can't even really get a hold of it. We can't really uh, grasp it. Turn over to um, uh, Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Some of our favorite verses, maybe you've learned these along the way. But Psalms 119. Verse number 105. How many learned this when you were kids growing up in Sunday? Yeah, well, look at it, the hands growing up, yes. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Um, you know, the word of God guides us. You know, if, uh, you know the, it's been said that this book will keep you from sin, or else sin will keep you from this book. Wow. Precious old Bible. Do you hold it precious? Do you realize everything that, well, there's some more things. Turn over to, uh, well, I don't know if you have to turn, I don't have to turn the page, but one not, uh, number 130, Psalms 119 and verse number 130 says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Wow. It guides us. It gives us understanding. Um, turn back to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. As I said, most of, uh, of our things that we're looking at, but we're trying to share some other things with you, some other verses that maybe you'll find interesting, you'd like to remember, you like to memorize. But over in John chapter 16 and verse 13, the Bible says, How be it when he... The spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. What's the Holy Spirit's whole purpose? Is to guide us, to enlighten us according to the word of God. You know, we really don't have any idea right now as we sit here. We have no idea the things that we read out of the Bible that we're missing. Just psh, goes right over our head. Don't, we don't even realize it. How many times do you pick up the Bible and read and think, huh? Geez, I don't even remember seeing that before. Or all of a sudden, a new idea pops into your head. Never, never thought of that before. Never thought of it that way. That's what the word of God does. He's a, he's a guide. Look down in uh, chapter 17. In verse number 17. The Bible says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Where are you going to find truth? Right here. In our King James Bible. Praise the Lord we can trust it. Every word is precious. Every word is pure according to the word of God. It's, a, it's an entrance. Light is an entrance. You know, you, you, you shine light on, guess what? Takes away the darkness, doesn't it? Takes away the darkness. Evil men love darkness, the Bible says. John chapter 3. But this guidance, this enlightening, this entrance... Go over to chapter 10 now of John. And it, guess what it's going to lead us into? You know chapter 10. Uh, let's pick it up in verse number 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Again, verily, verily, I say unto you, 
I am the door. That's the entrance. And we say the light gives us entrance. The light shines on our pathway to guide us and direct us. That's what the Word of God does. If you look at uh, Galatians, uh, um, the Word of God brings us to what? Christ. All it can do is bring us to Christ. We can't keep the, the word because the word condemns us. But the word also brings us to Jesus Christ and shows us that we cannot save ourselves. I am the door of the sheep. And it kind of goes along here with the shepherd. And I think that's why he puts them together. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The sh good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. As we're thinking about that entrance, turn over to chapter 14. Chapter 14 of John. <clears throat> And as we talked about Thomas asking that question, oh man, notice the question. <clears throat> Some people think Thomas, he's doubting Thomas that, but I'm glad for Thomas. Aren't you glad? It, would you want to ask this question to the Lord? I mean, these are his apostles. You know, what, sometimes you think, what, like, they don't know this stuff, but he puts them in here so we can know. Don't you have a question? Oh man, any boy, you go through the Bible and just look at the questions and then how God answers them. What's that for? That's for us. I just can't, I tell you, God's been good to me. God's been good in my life, though I've had my share of, how's that go, Dan? Hard time. By my side, he's always stood through it all. God's been good. You've got to sing that at my funeral. Okay? And I don't want anybody ever to think that God hasn't been good to me. Man, he has been so good to me. Man, I look out there and I see so many of my friends. Praise the Lord. God's been good to me. i got a good family. My grandkids are... They're up for debate here, but... I'm telling you, God is so good to us. And we don't even realize how good God is to us. We don't even, you know, if we would just stop to think about some of the near misses in our lives, uh, if we just thought about some things that go thump. Scott wasn't here for this morning's message and, and like that. Boy, I tell you, a lot of things can happen. And I tell you, I've been mm, close a lot of times in cars, bicycles, Mm. I know who's in charge. I know who's keeping me, too. It's the Lord. A man, anytime, anything could happen. Ah, praise the Lord for his goodness. But anyways, he says in verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hey, guess what? Guess what he's going to say next? No man cometh unto the Father but by me, because he's that door. He's the entrance. You're not going to get there. By doing good works, you're not going to get there by Muhammad or uh, uh, Shinto, Buddha, not, none of the Russells. I'm sorry, Russell's not going to get you there. Joseph Smith's not going to make it your way for, uh-uh. It's only the Lord Jesus Christ. No man. And so we have the entrance, but he's, he's the door here. Uh, what does it say over in Ro uh, Romans 10, 17 there, Dan? So then... Yeah, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Without the word of God, folks, where are you going to be? Where do you hear about Jesus Christ? In God's word. And he's done that specifically. What does Jesus do with his word? He uses it as a weapon, as a sword. The answer, that's what we need to do. That's why it's so important to memorize it. And so I don't want you to be... Uh, discouraged with all the verses that we got. There's going to be a break, and then we'll just we'll review them. But I know there's some more coming next week in the bulletin, but don't, just be patient. Just keep going over them. There'll be a little break where we can just 
you know, study them and go over each one of them. Uh, we also had that I am the good shepherd. And so and he opens the door for us. I tell you, God is just everything for us. Um, look over in um, Matthew 22. Matthew has so much in here with the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. He tells us so many things, but I want to pick it up down in verse number 41. And the Bible says, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. He saith unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord? Saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Boy, when Jesus turns the tide and asks them a question, uh-oh. What are we going to say? Well, we're going to go to the scriptures. Go back to Psalms 110. Psalms 110. Where we see that, a Psalm of David. Psalms 110, verse 1 says, The Lord said unto my Lord... Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Well, let's just turn back to Psalms 23. I always like this, you know. Uh, a lot of times this is used during uh, a funeral. How many of you heard Psalms 23 at a funeral? Most, most everybody. Psalms 23 says, what does David say? The Lord is my shepherd. Huh. What an analogy. I shall not want. Boy, I hate it when they change that. That's such a beautiful psalm. And you know, I heard a pastor preach this once, and he got down to the end. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And as he read that, he said, you know, that's all based on one verse. Verse number one. Is the Lord your shepherd? David could say that. He made the Lord his shepherd, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the self-existing one, the great I am. Uh, well, let's see, we got to do uh, Tim's favorite, ver one of Tim's favorite verses here. Tim Masters, my uh, sister's Sunday school teacher, we got to give him one of our favorite verses here. Uh, chapter 12 of Hebrews, chapter 12 of Hebrews, and Tim probably knows which verse I'm going to go to there. Verse number 2. Verse number two, one of my favorite verses. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy before him, endure, uh, excuse me, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Sitting there at the right hand of the throne of God. Remember when he stood up? Who'd he stand up for, remember? They were stoning Stephen. And what did Stephen say? He didn't say, I see him sitting there. He said, I see the Son of God standing. Whoa, guess why? He's getting ready to welcome him home. Whoa. Man. Well, we gotta, we gotta keep on going. We got still a lot more to go. Um, Turn over to uh, 1 Corinthians 1.9. 1 Corinthians 1.9. I was thinking about... The door, the good shepherd, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father by, by me. The entrance into heaven. I was thinking about all these things when we're, we're, we're putting them together. You think about your privileges... You know what so many people are uh, upset by? Someone will say to them, oh, you can't do this, or you can't do that worldly thing, and oh, they get all, oh, yeah, you can't do any of that stuff. And the privileges that we have as Christians, why would you want any of that junk in the world? 
We have so many privileges because of our entrance into eternal life as a Christian and what God has prepared for us in even in this life. We know what he's got prepared for us and we don't even we can't even begin to understand half that stuff up in heaven. But in this life, you know, God wants us to have a abundant life. And guess what? He's going he wants to give you things more abundantly than you can even ask or you can't even think about it. That's what I'm saying. You read the word of God. How many things do we miss out of it? How many privileges do we just pass by in the word of God that we have? Well, over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, look down at verse number 9. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. What? We have fellowship with Jesus Christ? Communion? Isn't that kind of odd? Us sinners? Turn over to 1 John. Turn over to 1 John, the privileges that God gives us. Do we take advantage of those privileges? 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1 says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled of the word of life. There it is. There's the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, my. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. The thing that we can have together is fellowship with one with another. Because why? Because we have the same Father. We have the same Father. Our Father. It's not my Father. It's not your Father. It's our Father which art in heaven. Wow, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're talking with uh, uh, the Steels and uh, just the fellowship in, around the word of God and hearing how they were saved and how many uh, people that got saved and through their testimony and uh, just uh, praise the Lord and some dear uh, family members and that. Wow, what a, what a great blessing. What a great blessing privilege to share the word of God with somebody. Just take a gospel track and just, what a privilege it is. Oh man, we gotta go out calling this week. I don't know, I don't know if I feel like going out calling and giving out somebody the, the good news of the gospel that might save their soul. We have the privilege to do that. Boy, so many times we think wrong thoughts. We think all kinds of wrong thoughts. Turn over to uh, Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. And let's pick it up in uh, verse number 15. <clears throat> this is after the death of Christ and a couple of fellows are on their way uh, to the uh, Emmaus. And they're on the road. And in verse 15 of chapter 24 of Luke, it says, And it came to pass that while they communed together, and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Wow, that's kind of strange. We're talking all about Jesus, but they don't know him. They don't know him. Go down to verse number 32. Go down to verse number 32. And you know how Christ witnesses to him. He shows himself to him through the scriptures. And down in verse 32, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us, what? The scriptures that tell us all about Jesus Christ. Oh my, what a, what a privilege to be taught by the Lord. And yet we have the Lord right here to teach us. The Holy Spirit's our guide. Guide us into all truth. Turn over to uh, John chapter 11. John chapter 11. 
Well, I tell you what. Let me mention a couple other ones. You don't usually see them, but I just wanted to, to mention to you. Go over in chapter 8 of John, John chapter 8. And when he's uh, rebuking them here because of their sin, because they won't believe who Jesus Christ is, he says in verse 23 of John chapter 8, And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath. I am from above. There's only one person that ever came from heaven down to earth. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to you wanna compound this, this saying? Go over to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. In verse number 13, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus here. In verse 13, he says something really interesting of chapter 3 of John. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Okay, well, that's Jesus, right? Even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. He's talking to him right now. But where does he say the Son of Man is? That's him. He says he's in heaven. It's amazing how little people think about Jesus. Oh, he's the Son of God. Well, he's got himself. Oh, no, he's the Son of God. They don't know he's God. He's in heaven. He's talking to him. He came down from heaven. He's going back to heaven. That's what we're going to look at the next one. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's look at one more before we get to chapter 11. In chapter 10 also, in chapter 10 also, down in uh, verse number 36, he says, Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. Yeah. He is God himself in the flesh. That's why they wanted to stone him, making himself equal with God. Over to chapter 11 now, verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Did Martha really believe that? We go on in the story, and he told him to remove the stone. And what did she say? By this time, Lord, he stinketh. Did she really believe him? Are we that way? I think somebody mentioned that recently. Do we really believe it? We say we believe it, but do we really believe it? When we're going to pray for somebody? Turn back to uh, Matthew again. Matthew. 22. Pick it up in uh, verse number 29. The Sadducees trying to trick Jesus here. In verse 29, Jesus responding to them. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err. How come they are erring? Not knowing the scriptures. You know, we make a lot of mistakes. You know, one of the worst mistakes to make is not knowing what the word of God says. We don't seem to care. Nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. You're not going to be married in heaven, folks. To your spouses, I'm sorry. It's not that way. We're going to be married to Jesus. So many people are planning going up there having a big family reunion like that. They're not given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Now go back to Exodus. 
chapter 3. Go back to Exodus. What's he talking about? He's telling the Sadducees, you know, you say something, but you really don't believe it, and you're not paying much attention to what I'm telling you. But in verse 6, moreover, he said to Moses, I am. He doesn't say, I was the God of Abraham. He says, I am the God of... Per what do you know about I am? Present tense. I am, right now, I'm the God of Abraham. And of Isaac. And of Jacob. That's what he's telling them there. He's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. They're not dead. Praise the Lord. I am the resurrection and the life. Turn over to uh, 2 uh, Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And look at down at verse number 14. In the epistle to the Corinthians, Paul is saying, Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, because he is the resurrection and the life, and shall present us with you. The resurrection. And we've already looked at, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Turn over to uh, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Over in 1 Timothy, in chapter 2, Verse number five says, for there is one God and one, did I say mediatrix? Some people say there's a mediatrix between us and God. Doesn't say that, does it? There's no Mary here. One mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Why? He goes on to explain it in the next verse. That's why I like to learn both of these verses. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. That's the redemption price that Daniel was talking about this morning. It was his precious blood. Oh, my. Uh, turn over to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And let's look down at uh, verse number 19. Having therefore brethren, boldness. Once you're saved, man, we can have the boldness to enter in. One of the things that was noted about the, uh, the apostles after the resurrection of Christ was their boldness. They took notice that they had been with Jesus and their boldness. Having therefore brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest. How? By the blood of Jesus. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And that's what that veil pictured, the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's go over to uh, John 15. John 15, as we're trying to close this up. John chapter 15. And I'll mention... One other, one other spot. In John chapter 8 and verse number 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. That self-existing one. He's letting them know exactly who he is. So people say, well, he never said that. Well, I don't know what Bible they're reading. Verse, 15, or verse 1 of chapter 15 of John says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Uh, we're talking about here sustenance, uh, nourishment. What are you going to be nourished with? Going to read those novels? How much nourishment do you get out of the newspaper every day? How about on your uh, computers? How much nourishment are you going to get? Now, if you're on maybe a good site or something, my wife had a, uh, showed me something today that I thought was pretty appropriate about the Mary had a little lamb. And they took the lamb out. Now what do we have? We have guns and violence in the schools. We need to bring back the, 
the precious Lamb of God, back to the schools. But we have sustenance, we have a nourishment. The Bible is our nourishment. If, if we don't read the Bible and apply it to our daily lives, then, you know, seven days make one week, you know. You, whenever you go without the Bible, you know, you're going to get weak. I know when I don't eat food, man, I get weak physically. So what's going to happen to us when we don't read our Bibles daily? And not just a little Baptist bread. I mean, get into the Word of God. We spend so much time. Think about it. Think how much time you spend reading other stuff other than the Word of God. Add it up. When you could be reading the Word of God and finding out some of those things, those privileges that you're just not even realizing that we have. I think we took for granted the privileges of the freedom in our country, haven't we? Why are we in the mess that we're in? Where's the Christians? They're out there making a good buck. When we should be in the house of God, not forsaking the assembling our, our, ourselves together as a manner of summons, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day. We should be in church more, like uh, Brother Swanker was mentioning, but guess what? They're doing away with the midweek service, doing away with Sunday evening services, or people go to churches that have those, but they just don't come to them. What's the difference? It's a connection with the vine. We have a connection. We get our sustenance when we're connected to the Lord Jesus Christ and that fellowship. But a lot of times that fellowship is broken. But if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ with our mouth, right? If we agree with what the Lord says about our sin, because he is what? He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What's that telling us about ourselves? That we aren't faithful. Because if we were faithful, we wouldn't have to confess and agree with him about our sin. But praise the Lord, he's faithful. And he's willing to forgive us even after we have sinned. What does it say over in, in 2 Timothy? 2.15, study to show thyself approved. Hmm. And uh, I know a lot of you have worked in what? How many have worked in Awana? Awana program? Yeah. Approved workmen are not ashamed. That's what that came from. It comes from 2 Timothy 2.15. Approved workmen are not. Are we going to be ashamed when we stand before the Lord? Because we haven't studied. We haven't even read the word of God. So when are we going to study the word of God? How about uh, the Lord Jesus when he said in John 5, 39, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. Do you see Jesus Christ in the Old Testament? Some people say, oh, I don't believe in that. Really? Wow. The privilege when God opens your eyes to some things in the Old Testament that you can see what Christ did for us what they didn't have, the advantage of what pointed to Jesus Christ. And it says over in Peter that they, they wanted to look into it, but they didn't have that. They didn't have the Lord Jesus Christ there. We've seen Christ come. We've seen what Jesus did for us. They didn't see that. They looked forward to it. Wow, some of the privileges that we have as Christians. Turn over to um, Psalms 139. Psalms 139. You know, over in 2 Peter, the last verse in chapter 3 says, But grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow. Have you grown much this last week, this last month, this last year? Do you have a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ now than you did last year at this time? Psalms 139. Psalms 139. And 39. And I want to look at verse number 23. 
Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Jesus tells us to search, and as we're searching, do we ask him to search us? The psalmist said, search me, O Lord. Know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Wow. That's a good thing for us to pray about. And so, how are we growing? Are we growing abnormally? And then, one more. Revelations 1 8. Revelations 1 8. The Bible says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Look over in verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Turn over to uh, Hebrews chapter 12, that that verse that I, I like so much. Chapter 12, verse number 2. Of Hebrews, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him. I think Haggai talks about that, doesn't it? Haggai says, consider. And here, in verse 3, we say, for consider, consider Jesus. Huh. I would take it that he's talking to usually brethren here when he's talking to the Hebrews here. And there's, he's, they're saying to the people, consider Jesus. Then they consider him. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Christ was judged by wicked sinners and placed on the cross. Whose sins did he die for? Who put him on the cross? Sinners are judging Christ there. But that's not always going to be that way, is it? Turn over to, and we'll close with John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Boy, there's a lot of things in the Word of God, the privileges that we have to have, just to have the Word of God here before us. Man, how many places don't have the Word of God? And how many of us don't even bother picking up and reading it and knowing it like we, what we ought to? Pick it up in verse number 47 of John chapter 12. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And that's what, what Christ is saying. Whenever you read about what Jesus did, he died on the cross, he paid for our sins. Uh, hold your spot there. Go back to chapter 3 of John. Go back to chapter 3 of John. Look at, uh, we know verse 16, about how God loved the world. Look at verse 17, though. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. I mean, that's where our salvation is from, is from the Lord Jesus Christ. And over in um, chapter 5, 
Go over to chapter 5. In verse 22 of John, the Bible says, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. All judgment unto the Son. But Jesus didn't come to condemn us. So, But go over to chapter, um, chapter 9. Go over to chapter 9. And look at verse number 39. So, so you understand, there's no contradictions in the Bible. There's our finite minds, which can't figure out some things. But the word of God is always true, and it's always pure. It's always right. Verse 39 says, And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. He took our judgment upon him on the cross of Calvary. That's why he didn't come to condemn us. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid for our sins. But there's a responsibility for everybody. There's a responsibility and it won't be lost. So go back to chapter 12 now. And Jesus said, if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. See, Christ didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us. But. For I came not to judge the world. But to save the world. Verse 48 now. He that rejected, rejecteth me. And receiveth not my words. Huh. Hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken. The same shall judge him. In the last day. Guess what's going to judge us when we get to heaven, folks? The word of God. That's why it's so important. Guess what's going to judge the unsaved people? The word of God. It is so important. The privilege that we have of reading, of hearing the word of God. Hearing, hearing different uh, men preaching. I hope you come out this coming uh, Wednesday, Brother Al's going to be doing uh, the Wednesday night service for us. And uh, next week, Brother Tim's going to be doing it for us in the morning, Brother Tim Masters. Man, praise the Lord for the privilege that we have just to even stand up before you and preach the word of God. It, it's just a great honor, folks. And I just look, I see so many of my friends out there. Praise, I, you know, I just want you to know how important the word of God, but we will not be anything without the word of God. We can have the word of God and read it and just go in one ear and out the other too. It's what you read and apply to yourself, to your life, and ask God. Because if you don't ask God to search you, he won't. If you don't ask God for something, he's not going to give you. Ask, the Bible says. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. That's what it means. Don't just quit uh, talking about the diligent, the faith. He that believeth in him must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder of what? Him that diligently. Are you diligently going, reading your Bibles every day and studying the word of God and applying what the word of God says and getting rid of the sin? Yes. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And if we sin, what does he say? If we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know that confession means we agree with God, when we read his word, and we see something and say, oh boy, I'm not doing that. Ah, I don't have to do it. No, that's, that's not agreeing with God. And you're going to break that fellowship. That fellowship is broken. And when that fellowship is broken, guess what? The prayers are not heard. The prayers are not heard, folks. Maybe somebody else is praying. And the prayers are getting answered. But when you send the fellowship is broken. We need to have the fellowship restored and communion with God. So we can have fellowship one with another. 
and be, uh, be a help to one another. That's what it's all about. Well, I thank you for your time tonight. We've been here quite a while, but oh, just reminders of the great I am of the Bible. And there's so many things in here that Christ is to us. And that's just when we're going through the great I am's. There's so many more in the whole word of God that he just takes care of all of our need. He's our comfort. It talks about over in Corinthians. And a lot of times we go through things so we can comfort others where we've been comforted with what the great comforter the holy spirit of god so many things in this word let's bow our heads and pray father in heaven we just thank you for your word we thank you for allowing us to to meet here tonight the, the preaching of your word lord i thank you for it lord i know we've been quite long but there's so many reminders of your word of how great you are lord the great i am so many different ways that you meet our needs, Lord. And we just thank you for it. We thank you for the word of God that we can search out and we can read the privilege that, that you give us, that we can have communion with you every day.